Hey friends, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make some paper pottery using strips of, you guessed it, paper. You can use any kind of paper that you have around the house, regular construction paper, drawing paper, magazines, scraps, anything you have will work. Now, I usually do this with newspaper strips, but newspaper strips can be pretty tricky to cut unless you have a special paper cutter like I do. But this tutorial is for my friends at home who don't have a paper cutter, but they still wanna make some magnificent paper pottery. Now, you'll see this example I'm using has one inch strips. For this demonstration though, I'm gonna be using strips that are closer to two inches. It might be a little easier to work with at home because I'm not there with you to show you my special tips and tricks, but if you are interested in a challenge and the thinner strips, check out my newspaper pottery video. Okay, now because I do have a paper cutter, I did cut myself a big pile of even strips, but I'm gonna put these aside for one moment and show you how to make your own strips with a pair of scissors if you don't have a paper cutter. So what you're gonna do first is fold it in half like a hot dog away from you, okay? Awesome. Now you have two choices here. You can open it. Fold it over the other way. Really make that crease creasy and crisp. And then you could actually, if you're really focused, you can just rip that right along that crease like that. Now these are two awesomely even strips, but I don't wanna stack them like this. I wanna keep these separate one at a time. So. The prep for this project may take some time. So what you're gonna do next is fold it in half again. Remember, this should be as even as possible. And I really, I use my thumbnail to really make that crease crisp. Now, because I don't have that much room on either side, I usually don't wanna use my ripping technique, but why don't we give it a try? Notice how I went back the other way, I creased it, and because this is smaller, I do wanna go back one more time, so you fold back and forth, really making that crisp, uh, excuse me, that crease crisp. And actually, as you do that, the paper loses a little bit of its integrity right there, and it leaves you that ability to rip. And you wanna be gentle side to side. So if you feel confident doing this ripped method way, go for it. And these are gonna be your giant strips. If you want thinner strips, follow exactly what I just did. Keep folding them in half and half and half, and there you go. But let's say you're not a fan of the rip and you want to just cut it. All you do, Fold it in half, give it a good crease, open, flatten, okay? And simply cut along your crease. Now you really wanna make sure you are doing this evenly. Never close your scissors all the way. See how I'm never letting them snip, snip? If you close your scissors all the way, you can get little jagged edges, which is no fun. Oof, my scissors are squicky. Somebody mail me some WD-40 for those little things. Oy, oy, oy. Anyways, you cut as many, or rip, as many strips as you want, and you will be ready to begin. So I'm gonna trade those strips for my pre-cut ones, and let's get started. The way you start any kind of paper pottery, newspaper or paper, is with the core, okay? And this is actually just a few pieces, strips of paper put together, and I rolled them tight, 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 tight. The key for this project is tight, tight rolls. So let's see how to begin. I'm gonna start by taking two pieces of my paper, okay? And what I'm gonna do is make sure they're even, and I'm gonna fold them in half. I'm not gonna fold them in half evenly though, that actually doesn't matter. And then you wanna crease, 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 okay? 
This is a little easier when you're starting because you don't have the long strip to work with. So always fold it in half. And if you wanna do this with one piece instead of two, by all means. Then comes the hard part. You need to roll this up kind of like a sleeping bag as tight, tight, tight as you can. Now, anybody who has ever rolled up a sleeping bag, if you roll too fast and too loose, look what happens. This back end gets all floofy and you're like, why won't my sleeping bag just be a perfect cylinder? Because there's material there that wants to move. So what you have to do is start super duper tight and make the teeniest, tiniest fold you've ever made, okay? And then you're gonna keep going really pinch it pinch it pinch it tight 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 keep going until you can grab it with two fingers and now each hand has a special job this is your claw grip or muppet grip as i say see muppet okay hold it tight this is your tugging hand okay and i'm gonna tug this way and pull this way what i'm gonna do is i am holding i'm supporting the bottom with my fingers and you're gonna rotate, hold it with your thumb, adjust your grip, pull. Rotate, hold it, adjust, pull. Rotate, hold, adjust, pull. Like this. You wanna make sure, see how I'm using my hand underneath to support it? Imagine you're holding a little baby and you need to support that little baby's bum, okay? You need to support the paper too, just like you would the baby bomb. Anywho, next step, I'm coming across the edge right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do, flip it, hold it. I just did a little reverse grip with my hands and I have my scotch tape ready. Although masking tape is totally acceptable, washi tape, awesome sauce too and as you can see you'll have these little edges sticking up here but it doesn't matter it's cool bean town so we now have our core for our paper pottery now i'm hoping that because of this thickness my piece of pottery won't look so much like a cup or a bowl but a bit more like a goblet i think that'll be pretty cool i've never done it with this type of strip before usually it's just a little bitty core this is one inch versus two inch and my strips over here and i'll show you how to use those too just in case you're curious but let's keep adding to this one now if you're a little intimidated about starting with a whole group of strips at once, don't worry. You can start simple by just taking one piece, just like this, grab one piece of tape, not too long, not too short, and you're gonna place it like a tag on a t-shirt. Okay, got it, got it? Got it, got it, awesome. And right where you ended, you're gonna rest your new piece. See how I'm holding it steady? Press that tape down, and you're gonna do the same thing. Pull, rotate, hold it, adjust your grip. And that's it, and you just roll, roll, roll. Now I mean it, you've gotta tug and pull at the same time, okay? It's a little tug of war with your hand. If your strips are not wound tight, you're gonna have a very wobbly piece of pottery, okay? One last strip to seal it down. Now, the biggest oops I see in my classrooms is friends who start like this and they start to wind. Now, what step did I miss? I forgot to add some more tape, but let's say you think the one piece is going a little too slow, you're feeling confident, your hands are strong, your core is tight, this is what I call this, your little core. Let's try it with four strips. Yes, indeed, I said four. And what you're gonna do is stagger them. These are different colors, so it's easy to see. Stagger means you give a little space in between, in between each one. So one end looks like this, like that on the other side, and the other looks like this. And then what you wanna do, grab that tape a little longer and tape them all together. So now they can't move. Even if I hold it by the tape, they're not gonna fall away on me. And this means I can build my puck a little faster. So here we go. We put 
our newest strips down, add the tape, and start our winding process. There you go. Awesome. This is the hardest part because you, this page all wants to um, unravel. So you've gotta be super, super tight with your grip. You might notice that your fingers are starting to ache doing this at first. That's because you might have not used these finger muscles before. Now, instead of just placing your tape down, I want you to pull it over just like that. And there you have it, my friends. You just keep adding, adding, adding until your heart's desire. And I will come back to you when I have wound this into a full puck. You'll see that soon. See you in a moment. just about finished with my puck. Now, like I said, I have never made one with two inch strips before. So this is kind of cool. I wanna add this one last one and then I can show you how we're going to shape our pottery, okay? Now, a good way to tell when you're done is if your strips are just about touching or no longer touch anymore, or you could do it the old fashioned way with a measurement, about four plus inches across and your puck is done for a smallish but useful bowl. Now, before I move on to forming this puck into a piece of pottery, I wanted to show you what it looks like with one inch strips. And this is actually newspaper. So see how rad that looks? I mean, it's not perfect. It's all right if some spots are a little iffy and a little uneven. That just gives your piece a little more texture, which I think is great. So the next step here, whether or not you have used two inches, or one inch strips. I might wanna just solidify these two pieces here because this is a much bigger bowl, or excuse me, it will be a much bigger bowl and or cup. Now you get to choose what you like. I referred to this earlier as a sort of goblet. Now it will be a stemless goblet. Anywho, which means there's no handle to it. But I'm gonna show you how to form it now. So what you do is you hold it in your hand like a big sandwich, yum, yum, yum. Now, you're gonna use your thumbs to push and your fingers to support. You don't wanna push it all the way out as much as you can because the insides can fall out. This is especially true when you're using the one inch strips. So let's see what it looks like with the two inch. Here we go. Push and support, turn, push. I like to turn as I go, just to make sure things are even. Now right now, looks a bit like a cool bowl, right? Look at that. I wanted to use black strips up top because I think it's just so beautiful and it adds contrast to the bottom. But I want this to look more like a goblet or a cup. So I'm gonna bring these strips up higher, higher, higher. Look at that. Now, for your goblet bottom, I call it the cup bum or the bowl bum, because everyone needs to sit on a bum, and so does your cup or goblet or bowl. Now, if you let it stand and it topples over, that means your cup bum is a little too narrow like this. That would be way too narrow. That would just blop, plop over. But if you do this by accident, just tap, tap, tap it back in, or gently, Tap it on your table. And notice how I moved some of my strips. That's fine. Now, if you hold it by the side and the whole thing plops out of the bottom, that means you were not as tight as you could have been. So your piece is much more fragile. But you don't have to worry because it will solidify once you add the glue or Mod Podge, which is coming next. Now, to gauge your size for the little cut bum, like I said before, Think of it as the size of about an Oreo cookie or a Nilla wafer. 
Small cracker, bigger than a quarter, smaller than a silver dollar. Maybe the size of one of those like 50 cent coins. Remember those? Those were cool. Anywho, here we are. And that, my friends, look at that. Look at that mighty hold in my hand. Your stemless goblet. See how there's no stem? Normally you'd hold it there. But that's pretty cool, huh? I dig it. Now let's put that aside and let's make a little bit more of a bowl structure with my one inch pieces. So here you go, you push. Now this part you wanna be very gentle because you don't have as much room to step these pieces out and to move and form your shape. But I think we can get a good one. Oh yeah, look at that. The colors of the newspaper are my absolute favorite part. So that is that. I think I, do I like that shape? Now what if I was like, I hate it. Check it out, boom. Flatten it, give it a tap. Flip it, give it a tap. You are ready to do it all again. Boom, bada, boom, boom, boom. But I think I want it to be the other way. I like this way better. I don't know why. I just have a feeling in my heart that says this is the way to go. So smaller little steps between each of these strips will result in a more bowl-like shape. And if you have taller, if you reach it up like this tall, 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 it'll look a bit more like a cup. But like I said, I want a bowl. So here we go. Last time, I think I'm ready. Yeah, it's gonna be a nice shallow bowl. Maybe for my hair clips. I keep losing all my hair clippies. Gotta have a place for those, right? Yeah. Boom, bada, bum, bum, boom. I like it. And see how it's a little, little scrappy in there? You can ignore it, or if you want to be really gentle, you can sort of give your pieces a little haircut, but perfect is the enemy of good enough. So let those little pieces serve as some texture in your bowl and do as I say, not as I do, and leave it alone. Right there we are. Now, what do we do to seal these in place so they can never move again and you can enjoy your goblet or cup as it is? Oh, one thing I forgot to mention way before, you cannot eat and or drink out of these cups and bowls. Paper pottery is for non-food items, unless of course you have pre-wrapped candy and you wanna store them inside. That would be cool as gravy, but no real food, no cereal, no milk, no, 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 no. So I am ready to glue these up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them to the side and enter a plate. This is a styrofoam plate so my glue won't stick. A brush and you can use one of two things. If you have Mod Podge, this is one-stop shop. You add a giant layer and it is glorious. But not everybody has Mod Podge in their house. So what I did is I took Elmer's glue, put it in a little bit of a cup, not much, right? And here I have a little bitty cup of water. So what I'm gonna do, I'll just do this right on the plate, that makes sense, right? Oh, and of course, a mixing stick or a mixing spoon, whatever you have. Now, bit by bit, you're gonna add just a little teeny, teeny, weeny drip of water. And then you're gonna stir this together. This will make your glue more watery and just a bit easier to spread out. And don't worry, this coat of glue will dry clear. No problemo. You want it to be the consistency of like runny icing. Okay, see that? If it's clumping on you, you might wanna add just a drip more of water or a drop, whatever you think. I think though, I think that might be good. I mean, what do you think? Should I add a little more? Like one more drop. A drop, a drop, as my grandma used to say. There we are. la ti da Alrighty. We are ready to glue. Here's how it works. Cup here, brush here. We're gonna do the inside first. And you're gonna act like you're gonna scoop this up and gently 
glue with the curve of your form, okay? You don't wanna just brush it this way because watch what happens if we do that. If I brush it on this way, See how much spot, see how many spots I miss? You gotta go with the curve. See that, how it really gets every spot? So glue and brush with the curve of your form, which is your pottery piece, right? My fourth graders know we've been studying flat to form all year. Now for the edge, what you wanna do, see how I have those little like holes in there? I wanna fill those in, so I wanna stipple, which means use a little pointing the, oh, can you hear my kitty? Hello, tiny baby. She's joining us from the other side of my studio door. She is too naughty to join us. Otherwise, I would let her in, but you know, she says hi, or she says meow meow, like she just did at the door. Now I'm gonna do the inside, Ooh, sorry, didn't mean to hit the camera there, hoo ha. Anyways, I finished this part, and don't worry, it should dry clear, and we're gonna add one coat to the top rim, okay? Love this part. Now, before you glue, if you wanna decorate your rim with some cool drawings, if you used like, you know, something other than black construction paper like I did, maybe white, anything colorful that will take the hold of markers or crayons, anything that you can color with. And you know, you could do this with black too. Oh man, it would be so cool with like metallic designs on there or just your name. You can personalize these, right? Hi, tiny baby, I hear you. My cat is so excited about paper pottery, so I hope you are too. Oh, I know tiny. Alrighty, friends, this is the first option, but I have to let this completely dry, and that might mean you have to leave it overnight before you do the outer piece, okay? So let this sit gently, gently until it's totally dry. Then you flip it over and we'll do the other side. So now that my inside has pretty much dried, I'm gonna go ahead and add a layer to the outside. Same rules apply. Scoop some paint, or excuse me, scoop, scoop some glue, watery glue or Mod Podge, and you're gonna paint it on with the curve of the form, just like that. I'm gonna glue this whole thing and then immediately get this brush in hot water. You may need to ask an adult for some help here, but this brush needs to be washed thoroughly in warm or hot water and then you need to let it soak for a little while in some warm water as well, just to make sure you get all that glue off the bristles or your brush will be ruined, just ruined. Also notice really quick one little note, how I'm using my plate to turn the cup. That prevents me from getting my fingers gluey and leaving a fingerprint on my piece. Now, another cool thing you could use would be glitter glue or glitter Mod Podge. Add a little bit to your work. See what happens. I think it'll be really cool. Alrighty, officially, I'm gonna finish this up and I'll catch up with you when it's all dry. And here we are, friends. These cups and goblet are basically dry. Now for this one, I used Mod Podge and you can see it's really nice and glossy and shiny. I still have some parts in there that need like overnight to dry, but it's done. It's not sticky to the touch anymore and I'm cool. Now the goblet, which I covered with the glue and water mixture, you can see it has more of a matte finish. I even added some Mod Podge to the rim so you could see the difference side by side. Mod Podge is much more shiny and glossy also because I, I bought glossy Mod Podge, what can you do? And then the glue, it just again has that smooth matte finish, which I think is super classy. And that's it, my friends. You got your paper pottery here, newspaper pottery here, and if you're interested in this one here, check out my newspaper pottery video, which also does feature the one inch strip paper pottery pieces as well. 
This is a challenge and I hope you take it. Can't wait to see your paper pottery creation. Thank you.